Burnham and Eckersley set up Durham Declaration. The bowling of Chris Rushworth gave Durham the advantage on day two. He equalled Graham Onion's club record of 527 first-class scalps before the host's batters took them to 79 for one, their lead 112. But it was the visitors who landed the first blow, the captain's wicket taken early, courtesy of a quick low catch from Cox. Young and Beddingham took the Durham total into three figures, the opener into the 40s, and looking to make his way to a half ton. There was the rare sight of five penalty runs, Leach's delivery scooted past Cox and hit his helmet. Young got his 50 with another boundary. He got there off 128 balls. His knock had Durham leading by over 150 now. The pair also took the total past 150, but Beddingham would go soon after, out caught behind off the bowling of Tongue. It was slow going for the remainder of the session, some demons in the wicket to deal with, and the score at lunch, 162 for three. The pair kept going after the break, 200 runs on the board, and Durham's lead heading towards 250. All eyes were on Young. His knock had been patient and potentially crucial for his side's chances of playing their way to the win. And he found his way to 100, an on-drive for four getting him to the mark after almost five and a half hours at the crease. He couldn't add any more though, out LBW with no shot offered as Tongue got one to jag back at his pads. Burnham was now the man to lead the Durham line and was playing his way towards a 50 of his own. A single off Tongue was enough. The milestone reached off 111 balls. A boundary from Eckersley then took the total past 250 and had the lead creeping towards 300. And it would get there. They reached the tee interval with the score 271 for four. Durham now ahead by 304. Burnham and Eckersley picked up where they left off, this time aggressive and effective and taking the score to 300. They were enjoying themselves in the evening session, piling on the runs and both men were looking to milestones. Eckersley was especially quick to his 50. It took him just 48 balls to get there, and he brought it up by sending Morris into the stands. Durham were on the charge, foot to the floor, as they really took the attack to the pairs. Dolivera went for 26 runs off one over, featuring no fewer than four sixes from Eckersley's bat. They were racing towards 400. He aimed another over the offside, but couldn't get a hold of it. His lightning knock brought to an end when he found Dolivera out for 86 of 57. Burnham's knock was less explosive, but just as effective. He found the last runs he needed to play his way to 100. Three off Morris, all he required, and the last action of the innings. Borthwick waved them back in, declaring on 389 for five, Worcestershire's target 423. It had been an effective innings from Durham, their strong position reinforced by the patient play of Burnham, even if he was a little overshadowed by Eckersley's ballistic innings. Libby and Mitchell's opening stand was an effective one too. They were also aggressive in their approach, not happy to just soak up pressure, the score ticking over at more than a runner ball. It got them to 50, the partnership unbroken as the session wore its way towards the close. Mitchell was approaching a 50 of his own late on, and the run rate suffered, the pair slowed as the promise of a well-deserved rest appeared on the horizon. They made their way to 60 for none at the close of play, still quite a way behind Durham, but the hosts were still in charge.